Hey guys, welcome back for another product review. This is actually about multiple products, including some motorcycle specific, and I'll be showing you clips of everything here in action on the motorcycle later on in this video. But I'm gonna go over, this is the new Insta360 X2 camera. Now, if you've had a 360 camera from other brands or even the first version of this, you don't even have an inkling of what the platform was capable of. I expected the second version to, you know, kind of improve upon things a little bit. Oh no, oh no, my friends, this thing is five times more versatile. They not only improved everything the old one did, they fixed the few little bugs that the old one had, or I should say things that it really needed, like waterproofing and lens covers, got that now, but they made it entirely a new animal because they added some new features that opens up way more possibilities to use as a camera platform and not just as a gimmicky one-off kind of cool thing to do kind of camera it's much more robust now as a general purpose action cam vacation cam vr cam split screen video conferencing all kinds of stuff all built in so I'll talk more about all the new features here in a second, but really briefly what I have on the table is the new cam itself. We have a new motorcycle mount bundle, which is specific for motorcycles. It's not just a generic bicycling scooter or motorcycle kind of thing like other brands do. So we'll take a look at that, mount it up. We have a specific motorcycle helmet mount, more traditional, of course, if you've had a GoPro or whatever on your, helmet already you're going to be familiar with what this does but of course very handy and because it's now waterproof you can actually use it in the weather and not have to think about it and because you can put lens covers on your lenses you don't have to worry about rock chips and bugs so now it truly is a versatile to use on the motorcycle and not have to baby it device We've got a dive case. I'm gonna be going on a cruise later on this year. Well, hopefully if it doesn't get canceled. <laughs> and I'll be taking this to, well, wherever I can and we'll be playing around with it. But you can take it down over 30 feet without this. What this gives you is a lot more depth coverage and better clarity, especially the deeper you go. Talk more about the editing and color correction in a bit. We have, of course, the disappearing selfie stick, and I use, I still have one here from my other camera, use this a lot. This is really cool when you just wanna carry something around. It's obviously very long, and I showed you guys this in use in my first video about a year ago or so, strapping it down to the motorcycle and kinda of doing some cool action pics getting it way out to the side, it looks like somebody riding next to you is filming you because this doesn't show up in the videos at all. So it's literally like somebody's five or 10 feet away from you, next to you or in front of you, wherever you wanna point this. So these are very versatile, but of course you can just hold it like this and it's literally a selfie stick. And if you want some more distance from you, you just hold it out like this. Very, very lightweight, but durable device, kind of like one of those police batons very well constructed. So if you're just gonna get one accessory, definitely get the selfie stick to start. Lens cap, this is great for storage, but they also have covers to go over it for actual filming. Again, very much needed. Whenever I'd put the camera in my bag, I always had to have it extra padded. What I'd do is take a terry cloth towel or washcloth or something, wrap it around it and then put it in my bag so nothing would accidentally scratch the lenses because they are bulbous lenses, kind of like fish eyes, and they stick out on both sides of the camera. So it is very exposed when it's just sitting there naked. So they fix that, very cool. This one is one I'm very excited for because this truly makes the camera more a professional device, an external microphone adapter. No longer are you limited to just the built-in mic. I should say mics plural because they've added another one and gave it 360 immersive sound built in. It sounds fantastic built in, but if you ever need to actually use a, oops, sorry, that probably hurt your ears, a lav mic or wireless kit or shotgun mic or anything else that you wanna plug in, standard 3.5 millimeter port, 
here you go. This plugs right into the camera. Now that does make it non-waterproof, so you couldn't use this in the rain, but you wouldn't want to be doing that with your mics anyway. But that really improves the versatility of the camera because when I shoot videos, I very rarely just shoot with an internal mic. Except with the old camera I did because, well, I didn't have a choice. Now I have not only a choice of using the new improved dual microphones, if I was doing some kind of interview, I would definitely plug this in and then have one or two mics on whatever I'm doing. You use a wireless kit. So that's very cool. And then last but not least, we have something that, well, I think it looks goofy installed, but the results will speak for themselves. This is called the unicorn helmet mount. Think of this as a selfie stick for your head. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's a very lightweight, non-extending, but very lightweight mount that goes on your helmet in whatever extended position you want. What this gives you is a really cool, kind of like a drone is following you shot. If you stick it on top of your helmet, you know, it's like a camera flying over you as you're going down the road. Angle it back a little bit, you can see your back, so it's kind of like a race car coverage. If you've watched indie racing, they've got a camera in the back on, I don't know, some kind of little shark fin pod and on the rear spoiler, kind of an over the shoulder kind of look. This gives you that. Or you can point it forward and see front and point it backwards. Do it to the side, whatever you want to do. But yeah, you're going to have a camera kind of sticking way up there. But, and it does use standard GoPro mounts, so you can put on, well, tons of different action cams. Point is, it's a very versatile mount to get some cool shots. I could definitely see using this next time I go to the Dragon or any other cool road and, you know, I'm just doing a pass to make a cool video. Yeah, I'm going to stick this on and get some really cool angles, especially if it's got corners and all that kind of fun stuff. All right, now I got a cheat sheet here because I started to ramble and I left stuff off. So I'm just going to hit the major points about what's new about the new version. The one minor drawback, and it's not a fault of the device, and then we'll hit the road and I'll show you some examples of the new motorcycle stuff. Okay, first of all, improve, everything's improved. Faster processor, a lot more features and what features were there were better. We've got HDR processing on the fly, doesn't look oversaturated, looks absolutely natural, came out perfect. Low light, nighttime shooting, phenomenal. I mean, up there with my iPhone 12 Pro Max, it is just so impressive what technology has done with current camera sensors, not just this one, but every flagship mobile device. It's just astounding. In just the last couple of years, what has gone on with that, but you will be blown away by the quality. And you can go to the website and they've got a lot of pictures and videos and examples of every, everything I'm gonna say here and more. So you can judge with your own eyes. Not only is it waterproof, down to 30 or so feet on its own, but it has in the editor now built-in correction for shooting underwater because there's a lot of filtering that goes on from the water itself and the sensors kind of need to correct for that. And so they do that for you built in. Has an all new battery system, over 50% more battery power. So even with all these new features, a lot longer record time. I would average just about on the dot one hour of record time on the old one per battery which was fine. I mean, I rarely did single shoots that were longer than an hour. I just did one recently. I'll put a link down in the description where I did a walking tour of a cigar factory here in Ebor. And the record time was like 58 minutes or so and battery was down to like 4%. So I timed it really well, but that's kind of what I'm used to. And I carry spares and I have an external charger for them. And you can of course get spares and external chargers for these now. but. This is now pushing an hour and a half of record time, so even better. Very cool stuff. You can now connect your Apple Watch to control it, start recording settings and all that kind of good stuff, and connect your AirPods for a wireless microphone option. It also has voice control through the AirPod connection or just talking to it. So you, like 
I don't know, I think it's been three versions of the GoPro now. You can tell it to start recording, stop recording, that kind of thing if you enable it. There's an optional new GPS remote. So this is something that is for motorcycles and bicycles, mountain bikes, that kind of stuff. It straps or bolts, mounts, whatever, to your bike, and you've got start and stop controls and a little screen, but it also has a built-in GPS, hence the name, and it overlays, optionally, all kinds of cool data on your video, your altitude, your speed, a moving map, all that kind of good stuff about your recording. So that's really cool, you know, kind of like a race uh, telemetry kind of thing, all just from getting the remote. So the camera itself has a lot of new modes built in. With the old one, you would press record and it's recording everything from both cameras and edit however you like. It still does that, of course, but there's a new mode called Steadicam, which throws everything at the front cam, gives you the screen so you can see exactly what's going on, and it ultra stabilizes it. Now it's got the most fantastic automatic stabilization I've ever seen in a camera already built in, but this will let you automatically frame and you can tell it to point to a specific object and auto track it, it auto frames it. Really fantastic stuff. It does automatic panos, time lapses, hyper lapses, pretty much whatever you can do that a modern camera can do or a modern phone, it's got it built in now. The app for it is very robust. It has very easy, almost one button click editing for all different kinds of stuff. Or if you're like me, you can use Premiere Pro and their plugin is just flawless. It works. You just install the plugin, you drop in your footage, it auto stitches and it just makes it into a normal film that you can then edit in Premiere as you're used to. And then all you do is tell it at the end what kind of video you're exporting. And this brings me to the one downside. And again, it's nothing to do with the camera. It's just a limitation of how videos work and especially how YouTube works. Let's say you're doing a VR self-directed video. So the viewer can swipe around, can look around. They're controlling the camera angle. I do those most often with these types of cams, like my walking tours. I like to bring the viewer with me and let them experience what I am just like I'm walking with them, right? Well, if you want to do an intro, like I usually do on my videos like that, you can't control where the camera is pointed. So if they happen to move their phone away or down or what, they might be looking at the floor and not know what's going on in the video because they don't know to swipe and look around. So if you want to do any kind of, you know, framed video of, hey, this is going to be a blah, 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 here's what you do, you can't mix and match that in the same video. It, it's just not possible. It's one thing and that's it from start to finish. So. If you want to do a self-directed or a creator-directed, you're going to have to make separate videos. Not a big deal, but just be aware of that going in. If you're thinking about doing VRs, the whole thing is going to be a VR video. So the other cool thing, the last thing I'm going to mention before we hit the road is automatic leveling. No more calibration. You just tap a button. As long as there's horizon in the camera view, automatically self-levels the gyro and you're good to go. You can literally whip this thing around wherever you want. The camera angle stays perfectly still. You have no idea. In my walking tour video down below, there was a scene where there, I was in a room and there's a trap door where they throw bales of stuff down into the room below us. And I wanted to get a shot of that. So I just took the cam. I happened to have it like this in the air and I just stuck it down and all the way down into the room below. The camera angle just stayed completely steady as it went down into the room. Doesn't matter where you're pointing the camera, it uses its dual sensors to absolutely stabilize it unless the viewer's looking around. So truly fantastic technology. All right, let's take a look at the helmet mount, the motorcycle mount bundle, and the unicorn helmet mount and show you what they can do for you. So to stick on the unicorn mount, it's really simple. It is slightly curved. They do give you two of these bases, two of the little adapters here. This is what converts the GoPro to the Insta360 mounts, just a standard tripod thread. Also handy for lots of other things if you're like me and into photography. Hello. Boy, do I need to clean my helmet. Anyway, I've got a nice 3M pad here, and you just find a spot that you know, closely matches the curve. 
So it gets good contact and right about there. So this way I'll be able to pivot back and forward and do whatever we want there. Now you guys have seen lots of different ways to mount to the bike. I happen to have this, which I did another recent video on. It's a aluminum GoPro plate holder. And that's perfect because, well, you pretty much get the GoPro mount in almost every kit for the accessories. The motorcycle bundle comes with a miniature version, one of these, and uh, lots of different mounts and plates and all that kind of good stuff. So you can stick it here and have a selfie cam. Everyone knows what that looks like and everyone knows what it looks like when you stick it on your helmet, whether it's the chin or not. They do give you a ton of arm extensions so you can mount it to the side and bring it all the way around to the front. So you can do whatever you want. This is what I've never seen footage of or played with. And that's what I'm gonna bring you guys right now. So there you go. I hope this gives you an idea of what it looks like, what it can do. It really is a fantastic camera. If you need any kind of footage like this for whatever kind of projects you're doing, great for travel, great for professional use, great for just fun and carrying around, does a whole lot of stuff in one handy dandy little candy bar size package. There are two links down below. One is a discount link to them directly. And another is to Amazon, which has some specials going on right now. And it really depends on what you want as far as your accessories and bundles, what's going to be the best deal for you. So I encourage you to just check it out and see what might be important to you and which is going to save you the most amount of money. That's it. See you guys next time.